Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's news, we go in depth about why Toyota is sticking so close to hydrogen technology. We talk about a super stretched version of the upcoming LX600, and then we have super exciting news on the upcoming LCF. I'll see you on the other side, and let's get into it. <laughs> And before we jump over guys, I just wanted to thank you so much. Today I hit 10,000 subscribers. This is a huge milestone for me personally and for the luxurious fleet. Without you guys, of course, I would have no subscribers at all. But with your support and your continued love for not only the channel, but for the type of cars that we all like together. And for the most part, we all have a fascination with Toyota and Lexus vehicles. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, become a member of the fleet, and let's get into the news. Over at Auto Week, we have an enormous article talking about hydrogen fuel cells in the upcoming Mirai and how Toyota thinks hydrogen has just as good of a possibility to exist or coexist alongside fully battery electric vehicles. This interview was with Toyota senior engineer for fuel cell development, Jackie Birdsall, the hydrogen whisperer. And to preface the article, uh, last week, Auto Week, last, that's a lot of weeks, spoke with Toyota Mirai chief engineer, Yoshikazu Tanaka, and he talked a lot about how hydrogen is a great way to store clean energy. Uh, and that's the problem that we're currently seeing in the, ener the clean energy. Uh, production is that there's just nothing to capture it and store it and they believe hydrogen is probably the perfect way to do it. So why hydrogen? Jackie says it has several advantages. It takes five minutes to refill. It can go up to 400 miles on that refill with the next Mirai anyways. It has a much higher gravimet gravimetric energy density than batteries and this is very apparent in longer range, larger vehicles, that's where hydrogen becomes the most advantageous. And in my, one of my last videos, I was talking about how Toyota is going to be bringing hydrogen to the commercial market first for this reason. This article talks a lot about renewable energy and how California's standards are going uh, towards fully renewable by the next 40, 50 years from now. They talk about multiple ways in which hydrogen can be made as a fuel. So they talk about natural gas, which is going to have uh, CO2 emissions, but natural gas reformation, reformation doesn't. They talk about how biogas is a renewable methane and they are essentially taking pollution out of the system and converting that into hydrogen fuel. How much electricity does it take to produce a kilogram of hydrogen? Jackie says the Department of Energy publishes in their annual merit review numbers around hydrogen production. Last time she checked, I believe electrolyzers were about 65% efficiency, which means that you'll have that 35% loss from electricity in the creation of hydrogen. Anytime you have an energy conversion, you have a loss. But that, that's just the current state. However, she is very optimistic in how she sees many, many companies working on this to improve, uh, or I should say, decrease that energy loss in the conversion. So many other car manufacturers are talking about electric future. Apart from Honda and Hyundai, everybody else is electric. Are they all wrong? No, I think that we have an electrified future. BMW and Mercedes have also announced hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. All automakers see this trend toward electrification. The Mirai is the most advanced electric vehicle on the market. Toyota is the leader by far in fuel cell technology. I don't doubt that for the one bit. For areas of the country that have sun or wind power, wouldn't it make sense to have both fuel cell and electric battery vehicles? She said, yes, that's a win. So it's not just hydrogen. No, we see a full approach that includes battery electric vehicles, plug-ins and traditional hybrids and fuel cell vehicles, which is, she's just beating a dead horse on this. She's resting assured that they are going to have the full gamut of vehicles for people to choose from. Is a fuel cell vehicle lighter than a battery electric vehicle? It depends on the range. With a battery electric vehicle, the more range, the heavier it gets. So you're in the intersection at which fuel cell vehicles become lighter per range than batteries. If you had a BEV or battery electric vehicle that went 400 miles, you would have to have 130 or 140 kilowatt hour battery, and that would be around 1500 pounds. So to have a 300 mile range, it would be lighter to have a fuel cell vehicle. And it gets extrapolated more so as you move towards commercial vehicles like class eight semis. Now there's so much more information in this article. It would take me several hours to talk about this, but I need to move on to the next article. Over at Reuters, China finds Toyota 87.6 million yuan over Lexus price fixing. That works out to be 12 and a half million dollars for price fixing premium Lexus cars in Easter. Jiangsu province. 
China is claiming that between 2015 and 2018, the Japanese car maker set a minimum sales and resale price for its cars in coastal Jiangsu province, which deprived dealers of pricing autonomy and harmed customers' rights. They also fixed sales strategies, including offering customers discounts while asking them to purchase accessories at fixed prices, a sales tactic usually among individual auto dealers in China but frowned upon for car makers. But despite them getting fined, Lexus is absolutely skyrocketing in China. It is now their second biggest market uh, for the luxury brand. Over at the drive, the 95 Toyota Mega Cruiser is going to be legal to import into 2020. This is one of my dream vehicles to possibly own one day uh, or just make a video on if I can get my hands on one. They are super cool. It's essentially the Toyota Hummer and it, it's way cooler. How about that? It's just cooler. Now, what are the chances of being able to get your hands on one of these and how much will it cost? Well, they originally cost around $90,000 if you did the conversion rate. They're probably going to be in the hundred, mid hundreds of thousands. I would say $500,000 would be my guess. Uh, to bring in one of these from Japan. And you see pictures here of a renovated one. You see a modern CD player, you see DVD screens in there. This thing is insane. It even has more ground clearance than the original H1 and about double from what you get in the Jeep Wrangler. That is silly. It has a 4.1 liter four cylinder turbo diesel with 152 horsepower and almost 300 pound feet of torque. It is still, it's still made more power and torque per liter than Ford's contemporaneous 7.3 liter power stroke turbo diesel V8. What's insane is that this 6,000 plus pound vehicle gets 22 miles per gallon at a constant speed of 37 miles per hour. I don't even know if the LX with the 5.7 liter V8 can do that. And it has a massive 28 and a half gallon tank, which is good for 600 plus miles. Here's the bad news. Toyota reportedly only made 3,000, only 133 which were sold to civilians according to Toyota itself. And the vehicles have to be 25 years old to the day to be eligible for import. Mega Cruiser production didn't start until late 1995. So we're still a ways out for the majority if they would ever be willing to part with these massive things from Japan. But guys, I have it on my hit list one day. My bucket list for the channel is to bring you guys some video on the Mega Cruiser. Over at Fortune, Lexus confronts midlife crisis with aging SUVs losing to rivals. 30 years after its debut, shocked established German automakers demand for Toyota Motor Corp's luxury brand has stalled. Once the unquestionable leader of the pack, it hasn't taken the top slot in the U.S. since 2010. Its market share of 13% is down from a peak of 18.2% a decade ago. Jake Fisher, Senior Director of Auto Testing and Consumer Reports, thinks Genesis is taking that baton, thinking that they are what Lexus used to be. They've, they're not even close to what Lexus used to be, let's be real. He's, am I a fanboy? Yes, but Genesis is not, nowhere close to the market disruptor that Lexus was. So it's hard to even, it's it's crazy that he's even mentioning Genesis here. Bob Carter, Toyota's top sales executive in North America saying Lexus sales are flat this year. That's not a bad thing because the whole market is down on the year. So I think they're okay um, to just be able to maintain and plateau for now uh, because the market is going through some big changes. Rest assured, a lot of new products coming this way for Lexus down the road. We know 2019 was a year that we missed, said Paul La Rochelle, general manager of Lexus Franchise Annapolis. We will see Lexus making significant gains in the market over the next two, three, four, five years and beyond. So he is very optimistic. And of course, he is a general manager of a freaking Lexus dealership. So he better be optimistic. Now, one of the reasons he is so optimistic is that they are going to be having a new seven and eight passenger people mover. So, so expect the Alex to possibly have an extended row version. Our boy Kevin Watts, who's the editor of the influential blog, Alexis Enthusiast, which I quote them all the time, but he's, he's saying it's been a slow time for the brand and that's what happens when you don't have product to talk about. Yes, our, the product has been a trickle pace at best. 
quoting La Rochelle again. Behind the curtain right now, what's going on is that everything, all the attention in Japan is to get Lexus back in the game with a tremendous lineup over the next few years. They've been shown a lot recently, and that was in the October meeting in Washington, where dealers said the vehicle highest on their wish list is an 18 foot long SUV akin to the Yukon Denali XL. That is one of our primary asks and one that we are there looking at. So it is quite possible with the new LX being on a, the TNGA platform that they could have a short version that is very similar in size to the current LX and a longer version with a lot more storage capacity, as big as the Yukon XL, as big as the super long Escalade and as big as a Suburban. That would be phenomenal and I think it would just, and if they're able to make the price on this competitive, let's say around a hundred grand because you know these other luxury super long SUVs like the Cadillac especially are a hundred grand as well. If they're able to do that, and bring that radical technology that I talked about in the last vi video with a twin turbo V6, a small one, a two and a half liter, paired with electric motors to give it almost 500 horsepower, it would stomp the current market right now. It would absolutely floor them. No one else has anything that efficient. It's probably gonna be able to get 30 miles per gallon at moments, and if it only gets 25 miles per gallon, it's still gonna crush everyone else and with better power delivery, possibly more towing capacity. So it's really exciting to hear them talk about and hype up a, a long SUV, call it the LX XL. <laughs> it's so silly, but that's what it could be called. Uh, very excited to hear that this could be happening fairly soon, possibly in the next coming year. Here we go, Lexus and Nissan push horsepower to the max in apparent power war. This is over at Forbes of all places. According to Best Car, Japan's biggest selling magazine, I, I have Best Car articles on here all the time because they usually leak a lot of information. It's not always correct, but it's always fun. It's always fun. Nissan is planning to launch a GTR Final Edition package with 710 horsepower, while Lexus is LCF is going to have 670 horsepower. You guys are welcome to read this article and read about the upcoming GTR, but I'm going to focus on the LCF. The LCF will reportedly pump out 670 horsepower from a, from a revised version of its new twin turbo four liter V6. Now, it is, this is a misquote. It's definitely a V8. Why do we know it's a V8? Because at the Nürburgring 24 hours race event, they have a twin turbo V8 that they are racing with, and they said it's going to be seen in upcoming Lexus sports cars. So it is just a typo here. Uh, this is supposed to say v V8 instead of V6. That's 200 horsepower more than the current LC500s, and no surprise, it would have carbon ceramic brakes, carbon fiber body parts, including hood and brake vents for cooling, and a huge rear wing developed by Gazoo Racing. What's also interesting is that it would this motor would include the dynamic force engine technology featured on the recent two liter four cylinder gasoline engine. We see that motor in the Lexus UX, for example. This is the first time we've gotten any guess on pricing. Above $200,000 is incredibly high. So this thing better be able to perform at a super, super high performance rate if they're asking that much money for it. I was expecting maybe something around 150,000, but 200,000 and above is really surprising. But the dynamic force engine technology allows them to have a thermal efficiency of 40% with a higher torque curve at all engine speeds. And lastly, over at CarBuzz, we have a body kit from a third party body kit maker and they have it on a RAV4. So with the RAV4 Prime coming up being that it's going to be the second fastest Toyota currently in production behind the Supra, they just wanted to come out with a sportier body kit for that vehicle. So you can check it out here. I thought it was kind of fun. I think it's hideous, but what do you guys think? I think the back end looks cool. That quad tip exhaust is pretty sweet, but the rest of it just looks over the top and silly to me. So finally, some exciting news on upcoming products whether it's hydrogen or the upcoming LX or the potentially almost 700 horsepower LCF, 200,000 smackaroos or more for that vehicle is going to be hard 
to chew for most people. What do you guys think? I'll see you guys in the comments below. Thanks again for allowing me to do this as such a fun, fun hobby. 10,000 subscribers, guys. You're the best. Patreon supporters, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace out. Peace out.